We're back on Tuesday, and guess what? Uh, rabbi Itchel Krasnjanski, the rabbi of Chabad of Hawaii, is with us to share the Jewish calendar and some of the holidays that are coming up soon. Hi, Rabbi. Nice to see you yet again. Yeah, thank you, Jay. Always a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk. You know, there are many holidays through the year, and they're all very symbolic and interesting. They're all ancient holidays, having existed for many, many, many years. Um, the one that's coming up soon is Tishu B'Av, which is a celebration of the ninth day of Av. And what happened on that day, Rabbi? Very interesting. Um, it's not really a holiday. It's actually a fast day. There are two major Jewish fast days in the Hebrew calendar. One is Yom Kippur. Coming in September. Which is coming in September. It's a 24-hour fast. As well as Tishu B'Av, the ninth day of the Hebrew month of Av is a, uh, also a fast day. And Tisha B'Av is actually a very dark day, so to speak, because it commemorates very tragic events, many tragic events that happened uh, in the Jewish history. And it began with, uh, in the Bible and the Torah, while the Jews were in the desert after they left Egypt. So, uh, Moses, who was the leader of the Jewish people, Meshach Rabbeinu, sends 12 spies to enter into the land of Canaan and to come back with a report as to how best for the Jewish people to conquer the land. This is when he was leading the people through the, out of Egypt and through the desert, exactly. looking for a place. And Canaan, is, is it fair to say that Canaan is in the same location as this current state of Israel? Exactly. So, so in the biblical, in the Torah, in the Bible, before the Jewish people inherited the land, it was the land of Canaan. And there were several nation states there. Uh, however, when God appears and reveals himself to Abraham, who's the first Jewish person, uh, God promises to him and to his descendants that he will give the land of Israel, the Holy Land as it is referred to in the Torah, as an eternal inheritance to the Jewish people. That's written in the Torah? Yeah, in the very beginning, in God's, in God's appearance to Abraham, the first Jew. In the Bible. In the Bible, in Genesis. As well as to all the patriarchs, God re reaffirms the promise of the land of Israel as an inheritance of the, of the Jewish people. And Moses was going to lead the Jewish people from Egypt. They made a stop at Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments, which is the mission statement of the Jewish people. And from there, they were to go into the land of Israel, which is actually not that uh, far. Egypt from Israel is not that far. Uh, but what happened was that Moses uh, gathered 12 heads of the tribes, because the Jewish tribes consisted of 12. The 12 tribes of Israel. 12 yeah. tribes of Israel, and it was a representative from each tribe. They went into the land of Canaan to, you know, uh, to spy and to come back with a report of how best it is to conquer What the was land. going on there. Right. So. so the story is told in the Torah that they actually came back with a very disparaging report saying that you know, it's a wonderful land, but it, the people, the inhabitants are too strong for us to overpower them. And they said that our attempt would be a futile attempt. So the Jewish people uh, went into great despair, because here they had just left, they're in, they were in the wilderness and they had left Egypt, and with the alleged promise to go into the land of Israel, the promised land, uh, and now they're being told by these representatives that it's never going to happen. So they cried and they wept. They wept. And uh, this whole journey of the spies took 40 days. When they left the Jewish people, they got into Israel 40 days, they spied. So God appeared in the Bible. It says God appeared to Moses and said that they are crying for nothing because, in fact, they will be able to conquer the land. However, uh, even though God forgave them for the sin, God decreed two things. Number one is that that, gener that, that, that generation would not enter into the land of Israel. 
and the 40 days that the spies spent in this reconnaissance mission, uh, it was decreed that the Jewish people would remain in the desert for 40 years, for every day of the mission uh, corresponding year. So like in, the, in that way, uh, that generation would die out, and it would be their children that would enter into the land of Israel. The day that they came back and they reported this negative report was Ishabov, the ninth of Av. And God said that to the Jewish people, that now you weep, but you weep for nothing. But I will mark this day as a day for weeping throughout your history, the history of the Jewish people. And so what happened on Tisha B'Av, the tragedies that we, that we commemorate uh, on Tisha B'Av um, and, and, um, and, and mark it as a sad day, a day of uh, fasting and prayers, is that the first temple that was built by King Solomon um, after the Jewish people uh, conquered the land of Israel uh, and the first Jewish king uh, was King David, his son, King Solomon, actually built a temple. David started the plans for the temple, but God said that because his hands were, were soiled with blood because of all the wars that David had to uh, lead the Jewish people, so it wasn't for him to build this temple, the house of peace, it was for his son, King Solomon. Solomon built a temple, and the temple lasted for 400 years. Solomon is associated in common parlance with wisdom. Yes. The, is, that, is that coming out of the Bible? Yes, that's the story in the Bible, in the Old Testament, that God blessed Solomon with wisdom beyond any other, living, any other person. And uh, David, is the same David with the slingshot? Yes, and Goliath, David and Goliath. Right, so David was Solomon's father, King Solomon's father. So they built, uh, King Solomon built the first temple, it lasted for several hundred years. Uh, and then um, uh, the prophets came, the prophet of uh, Jeremiah, you know, he began uh, to prophesy to the Jewish people that if they did not, um, uh, if they did not move away from idol worship, because that was the thing of that era. People worshipped idols. And idol worship is something which is a big no-no in the Jewish religion. In the, in the Ten Commandments, the second of the Ten Commandments, not to worship any other idols. I'll have, shall, shall have no other gods before me. Exactly. And, as, and, and God, uh, the prophets in the name of God said that the temple would be destroyed. And uh, the Babylonian king, the Vuchadnezar, He's called, I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced in English, N-E-B-U-C-H, Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> okay. So he uh, destroyed the first temple, and he exiled the Jews out of Israel into Babylon, current-day Iraq. Hmm. And that's where the Jewish people settled. And uh, then when the Babylonian, and this was about 580 BCE, around then. Mm -hmm. Otherwise known as before Christ, right. before C. Right. BC. Right. Uh, and that ha so the destruction of the first temple happened on Tisha B'Av. Um, then, uh, then the Babylonians were, uh, fell and they were taken over by the Persians, Persian Empire. And, um, now known as Iran. Now known as Iran. And there was a Persian king named Cyrus. And he actually gave the Jewish people the green light to rebuild the temple. And the Jewish people... Um, Is this the same story as uh, Amantashen and Esther and yes, Mordecai yeah, yes, and, yes. and Purim and all that you spoke about in an earlier show? Yes. That's yes. the same Cyrus. Yes. Okay. Cyrus was actually... Uh, yeah, he was, a, he was a good king, kind to the Jewish people. Then there was another Persian king called Deryovish, Darius, who uh, was the child of Esther and Ahasuerus. And he also gave the Jewish people uh, the green light to build the temple. Then there was a Jewish prophet named Ezra. 
And he led the Jewish people from Babylon back to Jerusalem. They began building the temple. All these yeah. names are, and the people are named after these, these people in the Bible. No? Yes. Yeah, they all have sure. significance even today. So just to fast forward quickly, that the second temple was built, and it also lasted for 700, several hundred years. And then the Assyrians took over after the, from the Persians, and um, they defiled the temple. And there was a Jewish, king, a Jewish leader named Matis Yahu, who, who led the Jewish people in a rebellion against the Assyrian Empire because they tried to Hellenize the Jewish people. They tried to them away from their religious practices and they actually prohibited the keeping of the Sabbath. They wanted to, uh, for the Jews to assimilate in the Greek culture, Greek mm. uh, uh, Hellenistic culture. Which was still influential. Right. And, and Assyria, is that the same as Syria today? No, uh, Assyria I think was a was, was conglomerate of, of nations that uh, was led by the king of Assyria. Okay. But it does include Syria of today. Okay. And uh, and then the Romans came into the picture because they took over for, they, 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 they took over from the Assyrians, and the Romans were the ones who eventually destroyed the second temple, which was in the year seventy of the common era common era that, seventy years after, after yeah, christ 's right, birth yeah. right right so um, okay wh why did the Romans destroy the second temple? Well, the Romans uh, persecuted the Jews. They wanted um, not only to conquer all the lands, but they also wanted to wipe out uh, any independence of the, of the peoples that they conquered, and they also wanted to assimilate them into the Roman culture. The Jews didn't want to be assimilated. And the Jews resisted. And there was... Uh, um, a, le a Jewish leader um, uh, whose name is, um, um, it'll come to me in a second. The rabbi, the big rabbi at that time was Rabbi Akiva. And, and one of his students was the um, Bar Kochva. Bar Kochva. He led the rebellion against the Romans. And eventually, that's, this rebellion was crushed. This was the Hanukkah rebellion? The, the Hanukkah rebellion was uh, the Matis Yahu the, the, against, the, against the Greeks. Okay. Uh, the Hanukkah story took place about 100 and somewhat years before the, the destruction of the temple, before the Romans uh, okay. entered into the picture. But the Romans came in and they destroyed the temple and exiled the Jewish people. And that also happened on Tisha B'Av. On the same day. The date keeps repeating itself as a bad day. Uh, fast forward many, many generations later, when the Jewish people were expelled from Spain. The expulsion of the Jews from Spain was the in the Inquisition. Year, Inquisition was in the year 1492. The, 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 the uh, edict for the Jews to either accept Christianity or leave the country. It's the same issue, isn't it? Yes, exactly. you, you'll have to join our, our religion, or, um, and if you resist, we'll punish you. So the, day that, you. the day that uh, it was decreed that the Jews have to leave the country uh, was Tisha B'Av. Well, another major tragedy, because this was a, a, a major, major tragedy uh, amongst the Jewish people. Not all Jews... Uh, um, uh, were expelled. Some outwardly adopted the Christian way, but secretly they held on to their Jewish beliefs, and they were called by the Spanish, the Moranos. Morano actually in, is, is, uh, means pig in Spanish. So they were looked down at. They were looked at with suspicion. Um, and this is what the Inquisition... That's because what they, they, were, they weren't converting to Catholicism. They, or the Spanish version of Catholicism. They, they were converting to Catholicism, but they were suspected as not being true converts. They were just uh, doing it to save their lives, and they would spy on them. And, and those that Jewish people that were caught practicing Judaism were brought out to the fire or to the fe and burnt 
alive. Oro de Fe, I remember that. That was death by fire. Too. Yes, that's the Inquisition. So that also happened on Tisha B'Av. Fast forward uh, closer to our times. Okay, but we're going to take a short okay. break now. Because I'm really interested in that. Uh, Tisha B'Av has a long history, a long unhappy tragic, history. Right. Uh, and more recent times that continued. Let's take a short break. This is Rabbi Mitchell Krasnjanski, the rabbi of Chabad of Hawaii. We'll be right back here on Community Matters. Aloha. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough of Sister Power here at Think Tech of IE. And Sister Power is all about motivating, empowering, educating, and inspiring all people. And we have various subjects here. Sister Power is here at Think Tech every other Thursday at 4 p.m. Again, my name is Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, host of Sister Power. We look forward to seeing you. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at sistersempoweringhawaii at gmail.com. Look forward to chatting with you soon. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program airs every other Monday at 1 o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii. Most of my programs deal with my own life and law experience. Recently, I interviewed Alex Jempel, who I have known for over 30 years, about his voyage across the sea as a lawyer from Tokyo to Hawaii. Those are the type of stories that I like to bring and like to talk about. Human stories about law and life. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live with Rabbi Itchel Krasnjanski, the rabbi of Chabad of Hawaii. We're talking about Tishu B'Av, which is a sad holiday, day of commemoration. Many things happened over the, the history of the Jews that were unpleasant and happy on that day. Um, and indeed, uh, I just want to identify the, uh, the graphic behind us. That is a, a mock-up, an archaeological mock-up mock um, of the Second Temple, right? And um, you can't see it right now, but the, the Western Wall, right? The Second Temple is just behind me. And if you go down from that wall, that's where the Wailing Wall is. Right. And uh, that's, this is old Jerusalem as it existed in the day of the Second Temple. Correct. Uh, the Second Temple, as we mentioned before, uh, was built by the Jewish people uh, after it was green-lighted by the uh, Roman uh, king at the time, Cyrus. Um, but actually, one of the later kings, King Herod, uh, he was the one that actually uh, built the wall and, and fortified the temple, King Herod. Um, the temple was destroyed, as we said, but the, what was remained from the entire temple was the western wall, which is the wall of the courtyard. It's called the Wailing Wall. Because that's where that's the only remnant that we have of the Holy Temple, and uh, over the generations, throughout the generations, Jewish people would find their way to the wall and wail and pray to God, uh, as it being one of the most holiest sites uh, in the Jewish religion. And the custom, if anyone who goes to the Western Wall or the Wailing Wall. Is in the crevices of the stones, there's little pieces of paper, and the tradition is that people write notes past the past to God, you know, and uh, you know, uh, with their deepest requests and prayers. There must be a million notes there by now. There is a million notes. I believe what they do is after every every once in a while, I don't know how often, they take it out, and then they just burn it. And leaves room for new notes to come in. <laughs> new room. Yeah. And right on top of the wailing wall, I guess it would be in that, in that image, that mock-up of the temple, again, behind me, behind my left shoulder, uh, is the Al-Saqsa Mosque, right? Uh, somewhere around there. The Al-Aqsa Mosque is in the place of where the Holy of Holies 
was, which is actually that structure, mm -hmm. that structure in the center in of the, the courtyard. Center, okay. That's where it was. Yeah. Interesting. But that happened many, many centuries later when, uh, when the... After the destruction of the town. Uh, yeah, that was when the Muslims uh, conquered and yeah. ruled that place. Going back to the history of yes. Tisha B'Av, yes. in our century, or in the 20th century, uh, World War I began on the Jewish calendar on Tisha B'Av. Now, World War I was actually the war that um, unsettled the entire world order of that day. It didn't really end. It led to World War II, which culminated for the Jewish people with the Holocaust. And all of that started on Tisha B'Av. Mm. So even in our contemporary uh, times, Tisha B'Av, uh, you know, marks a very, very sad day. Up until World War I, uh, people lived in their towns and shtetls and little cities for centuries. The whole upheaval of World War I is when the mass migration of people from Eastern Europe began. And then most people still didn't leave. World War II broke out. And then for the Jewish people, that was the death. I remember uh, when I was a kid, we celebrated Tisha B'Av with by singing various songs about the Holocaust. Um, and one of them was Ani Mamin. Do you, do you, that means I, I, I will, I continue to believe, I yeah. will believe. I, I guess I, it means I will continue to believe in God. What, right. See, how does that, yeah, what, so what's the, the meaning of the, all that? The, the Jewish uh, philosopher and great, great uh, codifier Maimonides wrote many, many works of Jewish law and Jewish philosophy. He also codified a, a small little booklet that um, summarizes or expresses 13 principles of faith of the Jewish religion. Um, like the first one is you, the belief in God, a, a supreme being, our belief in um, reward and punishment, our belief in God's word being eternal. So the uh, 11th of, the, of, the, of these I believes, because in Hebrew, anima amin means I believe, is anima amin be'amun shlema. I believe in perfect faith, v'yaz ha-mashiach, with the coming of the Messiah, v'af ha-pisha yisma mea, and even though he tarries, We've been praying and believing and hoping that he would come really um, generations, centuries. Im kolzeh, nevertheless, achakalei b'chol yem shiyave, I eagerly await his arrival every day. And the song that you probably sang is a famous song of Ani Mamin that was composed by a Jewish person in the cattle cars on the way to Auschwitz. Oh. It's haunting. Yeah. It, it gets you right inside that right. song. Right. I never forget that. Right, right. Now, there's an interesting story with Napoleon, the, the, the French uh, emperor, that one day Napoleon was passing uh, through the Jewish community, and it was Tisha B'Av, and he was passing by a synagogue, and he heard, you know, like wailing and crying and praying into the night. So he asked, to st they stopped his wagon, carriage, and he uh, asked for them to find, he asked his, his attendants to go in and find out what, uh, what's going on. So they came in and they asked, and they told him that this is Tisha B'Av and we're mourning the destruction of the temple. Uh, so they came out and they told Napoleon what they learned. Napoleon um, sent them back in to ask, and when was this temple destroyed that they were crying about? So they said, oh, about uh, 700 years ago. <laughs> so Napoleon said that a people that can mourn their temple hundreds of years after it was destroyed is a people that will, that will live to see it rebuilt. If the memory of it is still alive, 
then it will see it will see it to be rebuilt. Well, he was very wise to say that. Yeah, he's right. right to he say was right. That. Exactly. Something even more recent happened on Tisha B'Av. Something very tragic that the world doesn't maybe know about. And that is, if you recall, uh, in Israel, they gave back the Gaza Strip to the uh, Palestinians in the hope to attain peace. There were many, many Jewish people that were living in that area. They left. They, were, they didn't leave. They were forced out by the, by the then Prime Minister uh, through the Israeli army. They were forced out, dragged out in many, many instances. Uh, and their whole lives came crashing down and destroyed. Um, and this was the uh, Ariel Sharon, who was then the prime minister, all in the hope that this will bring peace, that we will give this land to the Palestinians, they'll have a land to call their own, and they will build it and prosper and, and provide their people with a good life. Uh, many people were opposed to this, uh, fearing that it would not bring peace. This whole formula of land for peace, giving up land to obtain peace, uh, is, is appeasement and it's not going to work, it's not going to bring peace. Now, in hindsight, we know that it did not bring peace. They turned Gaza into a, uh, uh, you know, a launching pad, you know, the rockets and terrorists into the land of Israel. There hasn't been any peace. Hasn't been any peace. As a matter of fact, it got worse afterwards. And that the day that they were pulling Jewish settlers out of Gaza was Tisha B'av. Mm. That was the day when it began. That was a day that's that's marked the tragedy. Yeah. Ooh. I, I, and it hasn't happened this year. So what day is is Tisha B'av? What, oh, so, what so, day so is it? Tisha B'av fall? falls out on August eleventh. This year, so that means the night Sunday. before. Yes, yeah, so we so we so we Saturday the Jewish night. people stop stop eating. They yes, start fasting. Saturday night until Sunday night. And what, and what do you do? What, and then the what, special lamentations. It's prayers that lament the destruction. Because in, in, in the Jewish belief, we believe that nothing happens by accident, and nothing uh, in history happens because the Romans took over and they were strong and they were hated the Jewish people and therefore they destroyed the temple. We believe that everything is ordained by God. Everything is orchestrated by God. So therefore days like these, these tragic days, these fast days are reserved for days of introspection and repentance. Fasting is just the j just to get us in the, the frame of mind, you know, of of uh, inflicting, you know, suffering. We can now sensitize ourselves to the tragedy of what happened because the temple wasn't just a building. It's not just a building that's being uh, mourned, but the temple was the center of Jewish life. God's presence was apparent at the temple, and the diaspora that followed is not just geographic dislocation that Jews no longer lived in Israel, but they are now scattered around the world, but it's also a spiritual dislocation. And that's why we focus, emphasize the day of spiritual introspection and fasting and repentance. However, uh, you were right in labeling this show as a holiday, because what is, what, what is so foundational in the Jewish religion is that, that from the seeds of destruction is born the redemption, that the redemption not only follows the destruction, but the, uh, the destruction is the stepping stone for the redemption, wow. that the, the, good, the good that comes from the bad, not that the good that follows the bad, but inherent in the bad is good that we need to tap into and uncover and meditate on. Well, thank you, Rabbi. That was really interesting to hear about uh, Tisha B'Av coming soon.
And we'll, we'll have another show, you and me, about uh, other holidays yes. that come soon. Yes, yes, yes. They're, they're dotted as, uh, through as the we, calendar. As we journey through the Jewish calendar. Yeah. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Aloha and shalom. It was wonderful, as always. Thank you. Thank you.